All right, we're going to do a video today to demonstrate the Bearing Optics application or app that runs with their Super Yoder or Super Hogster laser range finder models, the LRF. So we've got one of those examples here today, the Super Hogster LRF. And before you get started with the app, you're going to have to create a handshake between the wireless hotspot of the scope to the phone, tablet, or PC that you intend to use with the app. But real quick, I want to go through the steps of activating the Wi-Fi and also looking at reticle number 9 in the menu. From a factory fresh scope, it doesn't come with anything preloaded in reticle position number 9. So let's begin with the scope first and power on by pressing the power key for 3 seconds and release. I'll bring up the on-screen inset of the scope viewfinder so you can follow along. It takes about 14 seconds for the scope to initiate and bring up the full screen and icons. The buttons we'll be using for this demonstration are all located atop the scope body and they are the power button, forward button, menu button, and back button. So now that the scope is started up and you want to enter the long menu, you're going to press and hold the menu button for three seconds and release. With the long menu activated, you'll press the back button nine times in order to select the reticle icon. Once you're on the reticle icon, make your selection by pressing the menu button. In the reticle menu, you'll be presented with your rifle profiles, either A, B, C, D, or E. And the second option from the top is the reticle type menu. You press the back button once and then select with the menu key. A listing of numbers 1 through 9 will be shown. And by using your forward or your back buttons, you can view these reticles. So let's go ahead and scroll through the entire range of reticles, but pay particular attention to what happens when we get to reticle number 9. You'll see there is no reticle present at all in this position and that's default from the factory as it's meant to provide you with the option to upload your custom reticle using the bearing application. So after you choose your reticle using the menu key, press and hold the menu key and select yes to save changes in order to back out to the previous menu. And now observe that the fourth icon from top will also provide you with the ability to upload the custom reticle to your scope. If you hover over it or select it, it simply gives you a prompt to connect the scope to the application to upload a custom reticle. Again, back out and select yes to save changes so you can get back to the main screen and enter the long menu again. And now we'll cover how to initiate the scope's Wi-Fi hotspot. You'll press the back button three times and the menu button will toggle Wi-Fi on and off. It's usually in the off as a power saving feature so every time you intend to use Wi-Fi, you'll have to follow this process to activate it. The password for all scopes is 12345678. The Wi-Fi is now broadcasting. At this point, we'll now transition to the app. However, from your phone, tablet, or PC, you're going to need to navigate to your wireless networks options and select the bearing optic hotspot. So if you ordinarily automatically connect to other Wi-Fi networks, you'll need to seek out the bearing optics Wi-Fi. It usually starts with Bravo Echo followed by a series of numbers. And once you do that, you should have full app functionality with the scope. All right, so we have a successful connection between the Super Hogster LRF and the Hogginator app. We'll start with the videos and photo tile. Clicking on this is going to show you what data you've saved from the scope to your device. So since this is a brand new setup, I don't have anything saved. Um, if I click Viewfinder, it's going to give me the live view from the uh, Super Hogster. So there it is. You can select video or photo modes to record into, and then it's got these uh, shortcut keys to the right and left of the record button. That's going to be your video file shortcut. Again, no data on the 
uh, PC that we're viewing this through and no photos. So those are just shortcuts from the main tile of video and photo. All right, you can choose to record audio. Uh, say you're in the field with your phone or your tablet, it will record an audio stream as well as a video file for you. Uh, access to files, this is gonna take you to what files are actually on the scope itself. So there will be data here. I don't wanna sync all files to my computer, so I'm gonna select no. Uh, but that doesn't keep me from viewing them, so I'm going to go ahead and take a peek in here, and here's some photo and video files that I collected the other night from the field. Again, these are on the device, so this app allows you to save files to your machine or to your phone or tablet. So I'll go ahead and, for illustration purposes, select this video file here. It downloads it, uh, of which you can view. But once you've downloaded it, it's going to go ahead and save it automatically to the app on your device. So to show that, the first tile we clicked on, there's our photo, and there's our video. So next we'll discuss tools, and that's the custom reticle. All right, we're going to have a look at the custom reticle tool within the Hogginator application. This is your main window. If you use two fingers on your phone, you can increase and decrease the size of the target representative illustration there. You have uh, units of measure for your aiming point. That'll come in handy later on some of the calculations below. And then you have a unit of measure yards or meters in terms of your um, size that you want to use these pips. We'll, we'll show you how to change the size of the target and then uh, use the correct unit of measure. There's a factory reset option if you get too deep into this and just want to come back uh, to the basic beginning. So that's the factory reset there icon. This button will take away the uh, illustrations that show the spacing uh, for each of the stadium marks. And uh, so if you want to clean up the view, you just click that button to remove all the clutter. If you just click on the screen away from the reticle, you'll get a different target uh, animal. So we've got pigs, rabbits, and then blank, so that you can just concentrate on what the reticle would look like without any target behind it. I'll leave it on the deer. Uh, the next button is going to allow you to put a custom range. Entering a distance value in this uh, box here is going to change the size of the target animal uh, to give you a perspective of what your reticle would look like on the target at an extended distance. So I put 300 yards here, I hit confirm, and the stag or the deer gets uh, smaller to be more realistic as to what you would see through the scope. Uh, and then you can click the information button, it'll tell you the actual height of that target. So that also gives you a, a basis of calculations. Um, the pig being almost half the size of the deer. All right, I'm going to put the target distance back to 100 to bring the target illustration back to a size that makes sense for the majority of my shooting situations. Uh, these, all the icons in alphabet order below the main box here, A, B, C, uh, D, and so on, these are going to affect specific uh, sizes and spacing of the actual reticle. So, this is going to this this next part of the clip is just going to give you a general idea of what each does. It's not meant to be an in-depth uh, how to build a reticle basically, but this certainly is the Hogginator app is going to give the user the opportunity to uh, spend as much time as you want customizing your reticle. Obviously, the more time you spend with it, the more refined and uh, useful it could be for you, but if you just want to get in here and crash around for a uh, hot minute and just make something that's quite simple, you could also do that. So it appeals to users of various um, inclinations of techno technology and uh, ability. Uh, and so this is the reticle I ended up deciding on, just a basic, simple ballistic drop at seven inches uh, for my 308 Winchester. So about a seven inch drop at 300 yards, uh, three to 350 yards. Uh, is what I've got going on with my 308. 
Um, so I will need to save this and upload it to the, uh, to the scope and we'll cover that next. Alright, so if you click the folder in the upper right, that's going to allow you to save it to your uh, device or read from your device. So we'll save it to the device and you'll name it uh, whatever you want to name it, but basically uh, you can start saving a bunch of different reticles to your device and clicking the folder and reading from the device will allow you to interchange between them and use different reticles at different times. Uh, hit the disk icon to save it to the scope. And here's the resulting custom reticle. So now my reticle position number nine as the reticle that we built in the Hoganator app with that uh, second or that first ballistic drop point being seven inches from the point of aim and the uh, stadia below the ballistic drop being about ten inches if I were to use the top of the post at the bottom so uh, yeah I'll get out to the range and uh, We'll verify at 300 yards that the 7 inch is about my uh, drop.